late effects of radiation whose incidence is dose related and for which there is no threshold dose is referred to as what? Stochastic. Good, stochastic. The answer is B. Number two, how is the intensity of the x-ray photon affected after each time it scatters? Letter D, make sure you put a star by that. I see that on lots of registry stuff. Its intensity decreases a, a thousand times. Or they can say 0.1%. That's the other way to say it. 0.1% of the primary. Okay, number three. Later long-term effects of radiation exposure are generally represented by which of the following dose response curves? B. B. Usually it's a linear non-threshold response. Number four. Stop me if I'm going too fast or if you have a question, okay? All right, number four, if the uh, exposure rate to a body standing five feet from the radiation source is 10, I didn't change it. These are old numbers, rem I mean, old units. Remember, all your um, questions are gonna be in SI units, okay? So if the exposure rate standing at five feet from the radiation source is 10 milli Rankins per minute, what will it be if, the, if you stand back um, eight feet from the source? The answer is D. How'd you get it? How'd you get inverse square law? Good. This is inverse square law, this question. You probably will have something on there about the inverse square law. Does everybody know how to do it? Yeah? Okay. All right, number five. Which of the following radiographic exams delivers the greatest ESE, which is an entrance skin exposure? Mm -hmm. C is the abdomen. Do you have this anywhere, these numbers? Did I give them to you in your cheat sheet thing? Safety, quick reference. Did you guys get those? Oh, on here? Yeah. One looks like this, it's a little chart. Oh, yeah. Okay. And the other one is just some general information, safety. Okay. All right. So I don't have it on my cheat sheet, so it must have been something that was in the book or on RAD Review. So let me go ahead and give you the numbers in case you didn't see them on RAD Review. Because this that's where I got these from, from that book, learning book. All right, ESE for a chest is 0.1 to 2.2 milligrays. Okay, for a skull, it's 0.9 to 2.1 milligray. T-spine is 2.5 to 4.2 milligray. And an abdomen is 3.3 to 6.1 milligray. Mm -hmm. Chest is 0.1. Abdomen is 3.3 to 6.1 milligrays. I don't know if you have those numbers anymore, anywhere, but that's what came out of the book. Okay, number six. How will the X-ray photon intensity be affected if the SID is doubled? D. So this, what is this a question about? Inverse square. Inverse square. Okay. Okay, seven. Some patients, such as infants and children, are unable to maintain the necessary position without assistance. If you can't restrain them, which of the following would be requested to, to hold the child? B. Good. B. The patient's father. <laughs> the transporter. That cracks me up. Okay. The answer is B. <laughs> Number eight, irradiation of water molecules within the body and the resulting breakdown is termed B, radiolysis. Okay, number nine, if the patient receives 20 milligrays during a 10 minute uh, pleural exam, what was, what was the dose rate? Mm -hmm. The answer is A. Does it say 0 0.002 mm -hmm. grays per minute? Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, if you look at it, it's it, it's in milligrays. The question's in milligrays. 
but the answers are in grays. So we have to change that milli gray number to gray. So what's milli? A Good, a thousand. So I, I know there's a mathematical way to do it. I just moved the decimal three, but so it starts with it was 20 milligrays, right? So it starts with 20 milligrays. So 20 milligrays is one, two, three, point oh two grays. I just moved the decimal. I know there's, I think you multiply it by a thousand, I think is the other way to do it. Or 20 divided by a thousand is the other way to do it. I just moved the decimal. So this is in milligrays. The answer is in gray. Okay. So I move the decimal over first. So it's 0.02 grays, but it's asking for 10 minutes. So the dose rate you're looking for by the minute. Okay. So it's asking for 10 minutes. So you get a singular unit by just dividing it by 10. And that'll give you the unit for one minute. Got it? All right, so the answer to this is 0 0.002 grays per minute. Because that's what they're looking for, not per 10 minutes. All right, number 10, according to NCRP, the, the annual occupational whole body dose equivalent limit is B, 50 millisieverts. You're just going to have to memorize these, you guys. Number 11, a, a thermoluminescence dosimetry system would you use which of the following crystals? C, TL, TLDs use lithium fluoride. Which ones use aluminum oxide? OSLs. OSLs, good. And the other two are other kinds of chemicals, not having to do with um, film badges. K-12, sources of secondary radiation include? Mm -hmm. C, only leakage and scatter, those are the only two types of secondary radiation. Background radiation is naturally occurring, they don't count it as secondary. K-13, the photoelectric effect is an interaction between an X-ray photon and? Good, A, an inner shell electron. Remember, the photoelectric effect is is what? What happens to them? Absorbed. Totally absorbed. Good. Is it totally absorbed? And whose patient dose is most responsible? <laughs> so that one is responsible for most of the patient dose. Which one is responsible for most of our dose, the worker? Compton. Compton scatter. Good. Okay. 14. Which of the following are recommended for a pregnant radiographer? B, they should continue monthly dosimetry readings and they should wear, the, remember they wear the, the second badge over the apron, not, I mean under the apron, not over, no, I said apron. They wear it under the apron. They have to see how much fetal dose that um, fetus gets. Number 15, the annual dose limit for medical imaging personnel includes radiation from what? B, only occupational exposure. They don't count the other ones. Number 16, what is likely to occur if 0.25 gray is accidentally delivered to a recently fertilized ovum? C. The answer is C. I guess that's another thing you're gonna have to memorize. Do you have any of those numbers somewhere? No. From Terry's class? No, not from No? But Brad from Brad Review? review? Yeah. Okay, all right. Another thing you're just going to have to memorize. Number 17, medical <clears throat> radiation accounts for what percentage of the general public's exposure to man-made radiation? Mm -hmm. Good, B, 50%. 18, which of the following are possible long-term somatic? What's a somatic effect? Um, what's that mean? It's not the children. Soma means yourself, okay, so um, to the person itself. Um, so which ones 
for both long-term effects. C, carcin carcinogenous and which is cancer and leukemia. Nausea and vomiting is what acute, that's an acute um, exposure, which is a short-term effect. These are long-term. They don't happen for a while is what they're saying. Number 19, the skin response to radiation exposure, which appears as reddening of the irradiated skin is called C, erythema. Number 20, an optically stimulated luminescence dosimetry contains which of the following detectors? B, aluminum oxide, all the O's. Optically stimulated aluminum oxide, OSLs. 21, primary radiation barriers must be at least how high? C, seven feet, they have to be. That's pretty much the tallest person that's gonna be in there, so they say seven feet. 22, the annual dose limit for occupation exposed individuals is valid for what? C, beta, x-ray, and gamma. 23, which acute radiation syndrome requires the largest exposure before any effects can become apparent? CNS, it is the most radio resistant cells in your body. 24, types of gonadal shielding include which of the following? D. All of those, D. 25, the law of Bergoni and Tribunal, I'll at least say it, states that cells are most radiosensitive if they are what? B. B. Okay. B. Highly mitotic, mitotic uh, undifferentiated. Mature cells are not radiosensitive. Immature cells are. Okay, so the answer is B, one and two. 26, the skin response to radiation exposure that appears as hair loss is known as D, epilation. 27. Desquamation again? The first one? What is desquamation? Dry desquamation, that's pube, like a peeling. So if it's a pube, peeliness to your skin. 27, biologic material is most sensitive to radiation, irradiation under which of the following conditions? Let's see. see, if you look at those, all of those answers are um, less um, oxygen, except for one. It just says oxygenated. So you, know, you would know by just looking at the answers, C. 28, the reduction in the intensity of the beam as it passes through material is termed what? C, attenuation. 29, which type of dose response relationship expresses radiation induced leukemia? Mm -hmm. C, it is a linear non-threshold. So there is a dose low enough where it's not gonna cause an effect. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's a straight line, sorry. It is C, linear uh, non-threshold. So any dose would cause an effect with that one, sorry. Number 30, the largest dose of the male gonads is most likely, likely to result from which of those procedures? Good, C, a cross-table lateral tear. Okay, 31, which of the following is likely to improve image quality and decrease patient dose? The answer is A, one only. Remember, mass is what gives the patient dose, so that one's out. Grids, what do you have to do when you use a grid? If you go, you have to increase your mass, don't you? Okay, so the answer is A. 32, the largest amount of diagnostic x-ray absorption will occur in which of the following tissues? D, bone. Know that little mnemonic, too bad for my, you know. Did you get that mnemonic? Okay, so from the highest absorber to the lowest absorber, first it's the teeth, then it's the bone, then fluid, next is muscle, next is fat, and the last one is air. And it's teeth? Teeth. Teeth. Oh, teeth. Did you guys get that mnemonic? 
many years, yes. A long time ago? I couldn't tell you that. <laughs> the one, well, the one I, that we had in my in my class, you don't, I can't say it that well, but the one that, the other one that's a little more um, kinder, it's too bad for my fat ass. <laughs> yeah, the one, I'm not going to tell you the one. Uh, ask Ronnie if you ever see him. 33, according to National Council on Radiation Protection and Measurements, leakage radiation from the x ray tube must not exceed B. B. Make sure you put a star by that. That's on the registry all the time. Leakage radiation should not exceed one milligray per hour at a distance of one meter. B is in boy. B is in boy. 34, the effects of radiation on biologic material are dependent on several factors. If a quantity of radiation is delivered to the body over a long period of time, the effect would be what? Good, B. It would be less than if it was delivered all at once. If you spread it out, it's, it's not gonna cause as much damage, supposedly. 35, which of the following accounts for the x-ray beam's heterogeneity? What does heterogeneous mean? Okay. Um, different. Many energies. Heterogeneous is many energy levels. One, two. All three. Oh. And the answer is D as in dog. All three of those accounts for the many energies. But the other ones will move in as well. It's just, then it's just not enough to do anything. Oh, okay. You get movement of all the shells, but and you can have um, electrons mm -hmm. knocking out a M N shell, mm -hmm. and so you still get some oh. different energies. Oh, okay. 36. Secondary radiation barriers usually require what thickness? Mm -hmm. These are barriers. Second ra secondary radiation barriers usually C. require what, what thickness? C. That's a primary. Oh. C is primary barrier. So D as in dog. So secondary radiation barriers requires 1 of an inch of lead. So we'll go over the, t the types of barriers. I think it's coming up. 37, which of the following illustrates the inverse square law? Distance is most effective protection from radiation. Yeah. Distance is rather ineffective protection from radiation. No. Dis as the distance from the radiation source, so as the distance from the source decreases, is the answer, radiation decreases. A, A only. A only. Okay, 38, according to NCRP, the annual occupational whole body dose limits for students under the age of 18 is A, A one millisievert. Okay, 39, which of the dose response curves seen in the illustration is a th threshold response to radiation exposure? Good, C, two and three. Okay, 40. What is the intensity of scatter radiation perpendicular to and one meter from the patient compared to, I think I just told you the answer to this one. Okay. So it's a thousand times less or B, 0.1% of the primary or original. Okay, number 41, alum aluminum filtration has the greatest effect on what? A. So remember, that's why we use filtration. It filters out the long wavelength photons, right? Mm -hmm. And what are those harmful to? The patient. What part of the patient? Long wavelength. Low energy. Low energy. What part of the patient are they protecting? Um, what would those hit? Skin. skin, good. Okay, so they're talking about skin dose. When we talk about filtration, it's all about the patient's skin dose. 41. What was 40? 40 was B, 0.1. Okay, 42, the amount of time the x-rays are being produced and directed toward a particular wall is referred to as it, its, or as the, 
B, use factor. You know what these different ones are? Let's go ahead and write it down. So the workload is how, how much work is done in the area, like how many x-rays per week. That's the workload. Okay. The occupancy factor is who occupies the area. Are they radiation workers? Controlling factor, I have no idea what that is. They just threw it in there. Okay, 43, the operation of personal radiation monitoring devices depends on which of the following? Ionizations? Yeah. Pocket dosimeters, they measure ionizations. Uh, luminescence? Yep, OSL, thermal luminescence. TLDs. Good. So all of those. The answer is D. 44. Early symptoms of acute radiation syndrome include what's leukopenia? Uh, leukopenia is decrease in white blood cell number. Nausea and vomiting? Yes. Cataracts? No. That's a long-term effect. So the answer is A. One and two. 45, which of the following contributes most occupational exposure? Good. B, the Compton scatter. 46, which type of personal radiation monitor can provide an immediate reading? D, the ionization chamber, which is the pocket dosimeter. 47, the, the most efficient type of male gonadal shielding when you use fluoroscopy is? B, the shaped one, it just contours it. 48, which of the following statements is or are true with respect to radiation safety in fluoro? D, all of those. Those are just different ways of saying um, the radiation in fluoro. So 21 milligrays per minute of MA used, the reason why that number is um, that way is because how much MA is used in fluoro? Uh -huh. One to five, okay? So when you're stepping on that floral switch, all the MA that you're using is between one and five MA. <coughs> okay. So if you multiply 21 by five, it comes to about 100, right? Okay. So those two are correct. Um, and then three in the boost or the high level floral, you can have the intensity up to 200 milligrams per minute because it, it pulses. Right. So all those are correct. 49, if an individual <coughs> receives 150 MR per hour at a distance of two feet from a radiation source, what will their, what will their dose be at 30 min minutes at a distance of five feet from the source? Mm -hmm. What are you gonna use? Okay, you're gonna use the inverse square law. And then you have to half what you get because mm -hmm. the first one was at an hour and this is at 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. okay, good, the answer is D. 12 MRs. Okay, 50, the source to skin distance and mobile must mobile fluoroscopy must be. You're gonna to need to know these numbers. Oh, C, you are right. A minimum of 12 inches. What's it in um, standard floral? Good. In standard floral, it's a minimum of 15 inches. Okay. okay, 51, the automatic exposure device that's located immediately under the x-ray table is the? A. A, ionization chamber, ionomat. <clears throat> where's the photomultiplier? Where's the um, photocathode? Photocatho is, is the thing in the floral um, image intensifier. What's the photomultiplier? That's the old one, and I don't know if it's gonna be on your registry, but that's the old one, the old AEC that's under everything. It's under the IR and it's under the patient. It's like at the bottom, right underneath the table. 
So the ionomat or the ionization chamber is the one between the patient and the IR. You've seen that on registry, registry stuff. Simulation camera, that's just your move med. Okay, 52, LAT is best defined as a method of expressing radiation quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A measure of the rate at which energy is transferred to soft tissue. Yes. yes. Absorption of polyenergetic radiation. I have no idea what that is. So the answer is B, one and two only. Okay, 53. Again, in 1906, Bergoni and Triboneau established their law, which, which states that cells are more radiosensitive if they are young. Yes. Yeah. If they are stem cells. Yes. Yes. If they have a low proliferation rate? Yes. No. If they have a high, if they continuously divide. So the answer is B, one and two only. Okay, what is the effect of RBE? Sometimes they call it radiation weighting factor. What is the effect of RBE as LAT increases? The, the, when one increases, the other adjusts it. Effect increases, so does LAT, and vice versa. Okay, so that answer was A. Number 55, which of the following would most likely result in the greatest skin dose? A, the short SIB. Okay, remember at high KDP, it's less skin dose because it's more penetrating. It's those long energy or long wavelength, low energy photons that give the patient skin dose. And so that would be low KDP. So the answer is A. 56, which of the following ionizing radiations is described as having an RBE of one? Good, diagnostic x-rays. Beta and gamma B2. Do you have those numbers? Some, I think I, they're in that little cheat sheet. It's in lab numbers, yeah. Okay. Good. 57, how do fractionation and protraction affect radiation dose effects? Affect radiation dose effects. Mm -hmm. D, all of those. Okay, 58, the photoelectric effect is the interaction between x-ray photons and matter that's largely responsible for the patient's dose. The photoelectric effect is most likely to occur in which of the following conditions? Those those with high atomic numbers? Yes, because yes, they're absorbed. With uh, low energy incident photons? Yes. With the use of positive contrast agents? Yeah, because it isn't, don't they absorb the x-ray photons? Don't they look white? Okay, so the answer is D, all of those. Okay, 59, filters used in uh, radiographic x-ray tubes are generally composed of? Good, A, aluminum. Okay, 60, which of the following factors will affect both quality and quantity of the primary beam? HVL? One and two. Good, one and two. HVL does, KD does. MA that has nothing to do with quality, <clears throat> just quantity. 61, an increase in total filtration of the x-ray beam will increase what? Mm -hmm. B, the HBL, half value layer. 62, which of the following are considered especially radiosensitive tissues? All of those, D. Okay, 63, how many HBLs are required to reduce the intensity of the beam um, to less than 10% of the original? We did this in that science comp. Mm -hmm. The answer is four or C. So the first half value layer is what? Okay, first half value layer is 50%. Because half of 100 is 50. What's the second half value layer? 25. What's the third half value layer? 12.5. You just keep dividing it in half. 
You all understand that. Okay. 64, lead aprons are worn during fluoro to protect the radiographer from exposure to what? B, the Compton scatter. 65, which of the following body parts are included in whole body dose? B, gonads and blood forming organs. That is what's considered whole body. That probably will be on somebody's registry. 66, which of the following personnel monitoring devices used in diagnostic radiography is considered to be the most sensitive and accurate? C, C the OSL. <clears throat> 67, what quantity of radiation exposure to the reproductive, reproductive organs is required to cause temporary infertility? The answer is B, two, uh, two grays. And actually, I have a little note here that came out of Bouchon, those numbers. 68, which, how much protection is provided by a 75 kVT x-ray beam when you use 0.5 millimeters of lead? C, 88%. Okay, 69, radiation safety requirements for floral equipment include SSD at least 38 for stationary equipment. Yes, what's SSD? The source to skin distance. An SSD of 30 CMs for mobile units. Yes which is um, equivalent, the first one, 38 is equivalent to 15, and 30 cm's is equivalent to 12, which we just had that a little bit ago. And three, high level boost mode must have a continuous audible signal. Yeah, okay, so the answer is D, all of those. 70, which of the following statements regarding the pregnant radiographer are, is, is or are true? She should declare her pregnancy to her supervisor? Yes. Yes. She should be assigned a second personal monitor. Yes. yes. Her radiation history should be reviewed. All of those. E. <clears throat> 71. What, what is the, or are the major effects of DNA irradiation? Malignant disease? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Chromosome aberration? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cell death? Mm -hmm. Yes. So all of those. D. 72, which of the following statements regarding the human gonadal cells is true or are true? The female ogonia reproduce only during fetal life. Yes. Yep. The male spermatogonia reproduce continuously. Mm -hmm. Yes. Both male and, and female stem cells reproduce only during fetal life. No. That is not true. The males um, go on and on and on. So the answer is C, one and two. 73, in the production of characteristic radiation at the tungsten target, the incident electron does what? It, that is considered the characteristic effect. So it's A. It, remember with characteristic, um, it goes and knocks out the K shell of tungsten. Okay, so that's the inner shell. Okay, so the answer is A. It ejects an inner shell Tungsten electron, <clears throat> which would be the case show. <clears throat> How do we get Brems? <clears throat> um, like it slows down or goes in a different direction. Good. Now these, we're talking about the interactions in the tube. Electrons interacting with tungsten. <clears throat> we're not talking about the photon interactions. So remember there's two interactions in the x-ray tube, characteristic and Brems. Characteristic is when the electron, remember there's electrons don't come out of the tube. Don't let them fool you. <clears throat> if there's any questions about electrons coming out and hitting the patient, it's not right, okay? The only photons come out. <clears throat> so with characteristic, the electron comes over and knocks out the case shell. <clears throat> then we get the filling in effect, giving off um, photons in the process. And the other one is Brems. So that's when the electron comes up to the tungsten atom and it slows down, they call it breaking, and it goes around it and it gives off energy in that process. So that's Brems, when it slows down. Okay. <clears throat> All right, 74, which of the following defines the gonadal dose that if received by every member of the population would be expected to produce the same total genetic effect 
on that population is the actual doses received by each of the individuals. A, genetically significant dose. So that's the average gonadal dose to the whole population, whether they got um, irradiated, irradiated there or not. 75, which of the following is or are composed of non-dividing differentiated cells? A, neurons and neuroglia. So those are the most radio resistant cells. <clears throat> the other two are radio sensitive. 76, biologic material irradiated under hypoxic conditions. What does hypoxic mean? Low, Low or little oxygen is what? C, good, is less sensitive than irradiated under oxygenated conditions. That's why they say if the tumor doesn't have any blood supply to it, they're really hard to get rid of because okay, they're, they're not very radio sensitive. The ones that have a lot of blood around it, they're very vascular, they're easier to do away with, supposedly, because they have a lot of oxygen. <clears throat> 77, what is the single most important scattering object in both radiography and floral? <laughs> Good, the patient, C. 78, types of secondary radiation barriers include? D as in dog, all of those. Those are all considered secondary radiation barriers. <clears throat> what would a primary barrier be in it, like an x-ray room? The walls up to how high? Up to seven feet. What else? The floor. No, the ceiling is second. You, you should never be able to turn the tube up to the ceiling. I'm being picky, but you're missing one. Some books say that. I've seen that. Some books say the II is second or is a primary barrier too, but. The door. Okay. Those are primary barriers. Okay, 79. Any wall that the useful x ray beam can be directed to is called a B, primary barrier. 80. Somatic effects of radiation refer to effects that are manifested. No, this doesn't go on to the descendants. B, so somatic effects are during the life of the exposed individual. Okay, soma, line, the effects for you. 81, which of the following radiation induced conditions is most likely to have the longest latent period? A, leukemia, all those are short term, all the other ones are short term effects. 82, a controlled area is defined as D, all of those. A control area is always considered an occupancy factor of one. There's going to be at least one person in there that um, works in x-ray. 83, which of the following terms refers to the period between conception and birth? A, gestation. 84, the person responsible for ascertaining that all radiation guidelines are adhered to and personnel understand and employ radiation safety measures is what person? Mm -hmm. B, the radiation safety officer, the RSO. 85, protective devices such as blood aprons function to protect the user from? Mm -hmm. No, just scatter. You sh they should never be in the primary beam. Or re what's the remnant beam? The one that comes down out of the patient. They should never be in the way of either one of those. 86, which of the following tissues are considered uh, particular, particularly radiosensitive? A, one only. The intestinal mucous membranes are radiosensitive. The other ones are not. 87, to within... What percentage of SID must the collimator light and actual irradiated area be accurate? A, 2%. 88, under what circumstance, circumstances might a radiographer be required to wear two dosimeters? Good, A, 
which would be one and two, during pregnancy and while performing vascular procedures. You know how both they sometimes have a ring on to check their extremities. 89, the tabletop exposure rate during floral shall not exceed. Yeah, it does. Good. So the answer is B, 100 milligrays per minute. 90, which of the following are radiation protection measures that are appropriate for mobile radiographers? The answers are the radi radiographer should stand at least six feet away. Yes. The radiographer must announce in a loud voice that they're going to expose so pe some people can move away. Yes. The radiographer must try to use the shortest SID. Yeah. No, that's a lot of exposure to the patient. So the answer is A, one and two. 91, radiation that passes through the tube housing in direction other than the useful beam is termed the leakage. Good, C. 92, radiogra radiographers use monitoring devices to record their monthly exposure to radiation. What are the types of devices listed uh, are monthly readings? Good, two and three, the answer is C. Pocket dosimeter you read daily. 93, guidelines for the use of protective shielding state that gonadal sh shielding must be used. Number one, if the patient has reasonable reproductive potential. Yes. yes. When the gonads are within five CMs of the collimated field. Yes. yes. When the tight collimation is not possible. No, it's always possible, you can always collimate. So the answer is B, one and two. 94, which of the following types of radiation are considered electromagnetic? Good, B, X-ray and gamma are electromagnetic. Remember, they're part, part of the spectrum. What's beta? It's in nuclear medicine, but what type of radiation is it? Particulate? Okay. So beta and, um, beta and alpha are um, particulate, they're particles. Okay, 95, what safeguards <clears throat> are taken to prevent inadvertent irradiation in early pregnancy? Patient postings, yes, so it says if you are pregnant. Two, patient questionnaire, yes. Elective book, booking, meaning they book when they're least likely. Yeah, so the answer is D, all of those. 96, the interaction between x-ray photons and tissue that's responsible for radi radiographic co contrast but also contribute significantly to patient dose is A, the photoelectric effect. 97, which of the following are acceptable ways to monitor radiation exposure for those that are occupationally employed? TLDs? Yes. OSLs? Yes. Quarterly blood count? <laughs> no. <laughs> so the answer is B, one and two. 98, according to NCRP, the total gestational dose equivalent for a pregnant worker is B, five millisieverts. No, you're just gonna have to memorize those numbers. 99, which of the following interactions between X-ray photons and matter involves a high energy photon and the ejection of an outer shell? C, Compton. They might have a little picture, and I think I've got some coming up in these tests. They might have a little picture as well on the registry of the different types of photon interactions. Okay, 100, occupational radiation monitoring is required when it's likely that an individual will receive what fraction of the annual dose limit? C, C one-tenth. 101, when an image intensifier magnification mode is used, what, what happens? Number one, the output screen or screen gain, which is an increase, is increased. Mm -hmm. So the op op output phosphor is um, increased when you use the mag mode. Mm -hmm. No, it's decreased. It's less bright. Remember, we'll go over in a second. Resolution increases. Yes. Patient dose increases. Yes. yes. Because it's less bright, so it's dimmer, so that automatic brightness control kicks in and gives the, it gives it a brighter image, plus it gives the patient more dose. Okay, so like if you guys go from a nine inch mode on your II to a six inch, that's what they're talking about. 
So from a nine inch mode to six inch, you get magnification, you get increased patient dose, you get um, better resolution because there's less spreading of the light when you mag. Okay, 102, which of the following? So the answer was C. Pardon me? So the answer is C, two and three. 102, which of the following terms is correctly used to describe x-ray beam quality out of all those that's listed? HVL. B, HVL is quality. I don't know if they use those words. There's a big debate on quality and quantity, um, but I guess you should know it. 103, which of the following has been identified as sources of radon? Mm -hmm. B, one and two. Indoors or in houses, it comes like from the rocks, minerals. Smoking cigarettes, yes. Radiology departments, no. So the answer is B, one and two. 104, an increase of one millimeter of added filtration of the x-ray beam would have the following effects. Number one, increases average energy of the beam. Yes. Yes. Increases patient skin dose. Mm -hmm. No, it decreases the dose. The more filtration you add, the less skin dose. It increases MR output. No, it decreases it. Okay. So the more HVL, the more filtration, um, it decreases the MR output. So the answer is A, one only. 105, which interaction between X-ray photons and matter results in total absorption of the incident photon? A, A photoelectric. 106, the function of the five minute fluoro timer is to do what? A. A, just alerts the fluoroscopist that five minutes has elapsed. 107, the control dosimeter that comes with the monitoring company should be stored how? A, A stored in a radiation free area. I just keep it in my room for ours. 108, occupational exposure received by the radiographer is most likely from what? Compton. Uh, A. 109, the SSD distance in mobile, they're asking this a lot. So in mo mobile flora, what's the SSD distance? 12 inches, good, the answer is C. 110, gonadal shielding should be provided for patients in which of the following examinations? Femur? Yes. Abdomen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say you can shield the male gonads. Um, pelvis? Mm -hmm. They say yes, you can. Yeah, so the answer, according to this Appleton and Lang book, is D, all of those. 111, which of the following radiologic examinations would de deliver the greatest entrance skin exposure? answer is C. Those are those numbers I gave you towards the beginning. One, 112, a controlled area is one that is? A. No, people, yeah. some people can walk through that area. C, occupied by radiation workers. Just like in, in Tampa General, that main area, sometimes you see them walking patients in there or something. 113, the process of radiation passing through tissue and depositing energy without ionization is, or sorry, depositing energy through ionization is called the what? C, LET, linear energy transfer. Basically, that's the damage done per unit of tissue exposed. That's what LET is, linear energy transfer. Okay, 114, which of the following cell types has the greatest radio sensitivity? D, lymphocytes. D. Okay, 115, what's the minimum require, requirement for lead aprons according to CFR? Good. CFR says 0.25 millimeters of uh, lead equivalent is, is okay. If your question says what would a dedicated floral apron have, it is 0.5. Okay, 
Okay, and that's what NCRP recommends, 0.5 for aprons. 116, which of the following would most likely cause the greatest uh, skin dose? A, a short SID. All those other ones would decrease skin dose. Except for MA doesn't really have anything to do with skin dose. 117, which of the following contributes most to patient's dose? A, they ask this a lot. 118, which of the following affects both the quantity and quality of the boom? HVL? Yes. KDP? Yes. MA? No, MA has nothing to do with quality, so the answer is C, number two. 119, the principal function of filtration is to reduce A, patient skin dose. 120, a minimum total amount of filtration um, inherent plus added of 2.5 millimeter is required in equipment that operates C, above 70 kbp, that's the requirement. 121, major effects of irradiation of macromolecules in, include all of those, point lesions, cross-linking, main chains, whatever that is, scission, D. 122, which of the following types of adult tissues are relatively insensitive to radiation exposure? Muscle, yeah, that's insensitive. Nerve, yeah. That's the most insensitive. Epithelial. Mm -hmm. No, that's very sensitive. So the answers, answer is B, one and two. Okay, 123. Which of the following dose response curves is a linear, so look for a straight line. <coughs> Threshold, meaning it, there is a dose that will cause damage. B. The answer is B, only three. 124, what percentage of x-ray attenuation does a 0.5 millimeter lead equivalent apron have on 100 kbp? Uh, C. C, it comes from the book. 125, which of the following is an appropriate, uh, an approximate skin dose for five minutes of floral performed at 1.5 ma? Uh, Don't. C. The answer is C. So what they did is just plug in the numbers because remember um, it's 21 milligrays per minute of MA used. They just plugged in the numbers. Okay, so 21 times, they're asking you for five minutes. So 21 times 5 times 1.5 is what they're saying the MA was. And you get 157.5 milligrays. 21 times 5. 21 times 5 times 1.5. So that's the MA. So multiply those across and you get 157.5 milligrays. Okay, all right. 126. It is usually recommended that a TLD or film badge be worn where? D. D, outside the apron at the collar level. 127, this, we had this kind of before. How is LEP and biologic response related? B. B, they are directly related. When one goes up, so does the other one. B. B, as in boy. 128, which of the following functions to protect the x-ray tube and the patient from overexposure if the photo timer fails to terminate the exposure? C, C the backup timer. 129. The radiographic accessory used to measure the thickness of body parts in order to term, determine op, optimal selection of exposure factors is the B. B caliper. 130, if the entrance dose for a particular exam is 320 M MR, the radiation exposure at one meter from the patient will be approximately what? Mm -hmm. So all you do is uh, divide uh, take 320 and divide it by 1,000. The answer is C, 0.32 MRs. Remember, it's 1,000 times less if you stand back, so that's how you get that number. Okay, if a patient received uh, 
4,500 milligrays during a six minute exposure, what was the dose rate? So they're asking you for milligrays, so switch over your uh, 4,500 milligrays to grays. How would you do that? Move the decimal three. Good, move the decimal three over, so it's 4.5 milligray divided by six. The answer is A. 0.75 grays per minute. You all understand that? Okay. All right, 132, which of the following will produce the most significant increase in patient dose? Good, B, decrease the um, SID. All right. Or <gasps> my... What are you doing here? <laughs> Take a little break, you guys. We'll do that for sure. I just see so little. Hi, everybody. Where's this thing going? It's all our stuff got moved out of the conference room, so I put it in the lab. Yeah, you guys know Margat? No. This is Margat. Twenty eleven. Four years ago. I really suck at math. <laughs> I'm just I'm going over math too, and you can't be. Close. I don't know that I'm leaving. I just wanted to come by and say hello to everybody, especially see my back. You guys, it's the lottery right here for the knowledge. So use it. We're reviewing. Are we junior class? Senior, we're doing registered. Ah. Still have yet to sign up for the CQR. Oh, we do that. I know, but the problem is the. I can't accommodation. I, yeah, I can't do computer. I suffered a traumatic brain injury in 2017. It was a subarachnoid hemorrhage bleed. Did we review that? Yeah. Like the brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't a lot of them with only CT. Oh well, then you'll see many of those. Yeah. Many, many, many of those. And some people won't make it. Where, where was it? I had gone on vacation to Wisconsin. Right. To go to a wedding from a family I knew back in the 90s when I was a military spouse. Right. And uh, the day before the wedding, I went early. You know, there's always last minute things to do. So yeah. I thought, I'll come up and I'll help. And, the bride and groom can enjoy their day. And they had it all controlled, so I went shopping. And I asked the Uber driver, I was like, where do you go to eat lunch? Oh, I gotta take you to this place. And I got out of the car, and I was walking through the parking lot, and a guy came around the corner, and he was on his cell phone while he was driving. Anybody? Uh-huh. And he hit me. He was doing over 20. And the next, that was a Friday morning, and I woke up the following week in a neuro ICU, 120 miles away from where I started. Never got lunch, never got to the wedding. But I was lucky that I lived. Yeah. Unfortunately, the long-term effects are um, my memory. It's all right frontal lobe. Yeah. from the what shift what shift in the brain responsible for concussion what happens when the brain gets jarred contra coup contra coup shift thank you I, I did not teach them that oh well so I'm here to teach you that <laughs> The, the brain, right, in the cranial vault, and you're gonna you're gonna get a trauma 
from some direction and it's going to cause that brain, think about it, it's going to cause it to shift to the other side and hit that vault wall. For me, it was right frontal. I sustained a very big laceration in the back of my brain, back of my, I fractured the occipital bone four times and then ended up with a abscess that almost killed me. Anyway, so I have memory issues, visual problems from occipital. Um, and I just recently learned that I'm going deaf. So I have hearing aids, but those batteries are dead. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good thing sometimes. Yeah, but not when you're constantly asking patients to repeat themselves. Or, yeah. yeah, so anybody going to CT, you're going to see many of those. For me, a lot of times they'll go in and surgically stop the bleeding, but for me, lucky enough, they just continually did CTs to see if it would resolve on its own. And then there was an issue of discharge because A, I don't live in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and B, how are you gonna get home because the cabin pressure right. of the plane. But my brother had, was on the phone with a neurologist every day and neurology agreed that if he flew up and escorted me back, you know, he's pararescue. Right. Um, that they would agree to discharge me to him. Okay. So, I have to sit in first class. Good for him. Yeah. But, anyway. All right, everybody just kick ass on the registry. Don't shake your head now. <laughs> Say that, yeah. I passed it. That's all you need to know. All you need to know. You know what you know. Don't second guess yourself. And things that you're not comfortable with, you need to stay a little later. Miss the, what's the show, Catfish on TV. <laughs> I know, it's a new thing. I'm like, what is this? Well, I don't know. But, um, an ass bath. Feel comfortable about it. They've got a while before they can take it. Yeah, but it's, it's a lot. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's like really everything you've hard. been. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't ever want to do it again. <laughs> but that CPR thing has me wondering. But, so everybody has your work plans, got them where you want to be. Some of them have positions already. Good. There's yeah. six of them going to Tampa Jail. Oh. Emmett is one. Yeah. Chad is another. Chad is another. It's my 11th year. Is that crazy? Yeah. That's it, huh? I'm done. Okay. No. It's just all I can say, you know, everything I think about since school is I should have asked more questions. I should have been in their face more. I should have just jumped in and gotten my body in there and just be, just be nosy. Who cares if you aggravate people? It's, it's what they're looking for. Yeah. It's, that's what they want. All right, so you're gonna retire? Uh, Thanks for retaining me anyway. My son was three quarters of it. <laughs> He's like, oh, what is this? How, how big is he now? Five eight. Ish. Five nine. Eighteen. <laughs> so he was just a baby. <laughs> that I didn't get to see you before you left this. Oh, I'll be around. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't forget to turn in your skull. <laughs>
That should be my, I should get a t-shirt. <laughs> Hey everybody. Thanks for popping in. What? What are we doing now? We are doing image production. Um, image acquisition. Is it the hardest one for you? Yes. Isn't it? <laughs> the equipment's easy. No, the, uh, which one is it? There's an image the production is equipment. It's the other one. The acquisition one is the hard one for me. And technical evaluation for me. Oh, a lot of the assurance is okay. Okay, so that's this one coming up. Where did Chad, Chad go? He's right out there. Emmett, you'll probably be working with her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I think she does mostly portables. Chad will, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are doing image production, image acquisition, and technical evaluation. You guys, this test is, is a couple years old. There's a lot of digital that's going to be on your registry. And this test doesn't have a lot of digital in it. Oh, please make sure you go over digital stuff. There's a lot in there. Okay, number one, what pixel size has the 20, uh, 2048 by 2048 matrix with an eight centimeter field of view? There is a formula for this. So it's the estimate is divided by the matrix. Good, okay, so pixel size, if you don't have this, you need to write it down, there might be a question. Pixel size equals the field of view, FOV, divided by the matrix. That is the formula that we use. Okay, so it's asking it in CMs, but the answers are in millimeters. So 80 CMs is how many millimeters? 800. 800, good, just one decimal over. So we're going from centi to milli. Okay, so then you plug in the numbers, it would be 800 millimeters divided by 2048 because the matrix is square. So you just take the one number. So um, 80 divided by 2048 comes to 0.4 millimeters for the pixel size. So the answer is D. D, D as in dog. Okay, number two, with all of the factors constant as digital image matrix increases, pixel size increases? Yeah. Decreases, so that is true. Resolution increases or decreases? Mm -hmm. Increases. Pixel size, oh, pixel size, we already said that. So the answer is C, one and two. Remember, the, the bigger the matrix, the more pixels you need to fill it in, so they get smaller. Okay. So when you increase the matrix, pixel size gets smaller and you get more of them, which increases the resolution. Okay. The answer is C, one and two. I don't know if this would be on your test, but anyway, the next one is that little graph. Okay, number three, which of the lines indicates the, the dynamic range offered by CR and DR? A. Good, A, line A represents CR and DR. Line B represents film, so I don't think this would be on the registry. Number four, decreasing the field size from 14 by 17 to 8 by 10 inches will? B. A, it de decreases receptor exposure and decreases the amount of scatter. So you're just making it smaller. There's not as much scatter. Answers A. Number five, which of the following groups of exposure factors would produce the greatest receptor exposure? You guys, their density is not going to be on your registry. Receptor exposure is. It's the same thing. So you won't see density on your registry. You'll see receptor exposure. That's it, A. Good, A. Just multiply across. So A has 30 mass and the other ones have less. Okay, 
Okay, number six, exposure factors of 90 kVp and four mass are used for particular non-grid exposure. What should the new mass be if you use the eight to one grid? Know your grid factors. C. C. So eight to one grid has a factor of four. Does everybody know their grid factor? I think I gave you a cheat sheet. <clears throat> okay, number seven, what pixel size has a 10, has a 1024 by 1024 matrix with a 35 centimeter field of view. So we're gonna do that, plug in, in the numbers, change the 35 cm's to, to millimeters. So 35 centimeters is 350 millimeters. And then divide that by 10, 20, or 1024. The answer is B, 0.35 millimeter. <clears throat> Number eight, a PA projection of the test is used to evaluate cardiac. The, the heart measures uh, 15.2 cm's between its widest points. The magnification factor is known to be 1.3. What's the actual diameter of the heart? So what formula do we have? Magnification factor formula, good. Magnification factor formula is magnification factor equals image size divided by ob object size. As in boy? Yes, you are correct. It also, um, magnification factor also equals SID divided by SOD. I believe we had this in your science class. Okay, so if you just plug in the numbers that they give you, the answer comes to B, 11.7 cm's. Remember for these form, this one particular one, the, the larger number is always on top. Okay. All right, number nine, which of the following pathologic conditions would require a decrease in exposure factors? Mm -hmm. C, emphysema. 10, X-ray photon energy is inversely related to wavelength? Yeah. Yeah. Applied MA doesn't involve energy. Applied KVP? No, it's directly related with KVP. So the answer is A. Just one only. Okay, I'm just going to tell you these, this picture because they didn't come out very well. Uh, picture A is with the patient supine because the, um, see how the bowel is kind of spread out? It's hard to see. And picture B is the patient um, standing erect. Okay, so it's asking which of the um, images shown below would re require a greater exposure. Would a patient laying down or a patient standing up require more exposure? Standing. Yeah, standing up because everything kind of sticks out. All right. So the answer is B, image B. Okay, number 12, characteristics of DR imaging include solid state detectors, yes. Direct capture imaging system, yes. Immediate image display, yeah. So D is the answer, all of those. 13, using a short SID with a large um, image receptor is likely to do what? B, it increases the anode heel effect. The beam can't spread out enough. Okay, 14, what's the other thing that would um, affect the heel effect besides angle. the what? The angle. Good, the anode angle. The steeper the anode angle, you get more heel effect as well versus a wider bevel. Okay, 14, to be suitable for an image intensifier's input screen, a phosphor should have which of the following? C. D, all of those. 15. In radiography and radiographing a large abdomen, which of the following are which of the following are effective ways to minimize the amount of scatter? Use closed collimation. Yes. Yeah. Use a compression device. Mm -hmm. Yes. Use of a low grid, this meaning versus a high grid ratio. No. So the answer is B, one and two. All right, I don't think any of this would be on your, your registry, but these are, um, these are images that you may have or may not. Number 16, the changes between the images of A, B, and C represent what? C. 
see wind or wet, which is your contrast. Okay, so it gives you more grays. So the answer is C. Window level is the brightness of it. 17, in comparison to 60 kbp, 80 kbp will permit a greater exposure latitude. Yeah, because you have more play. The higher the kbp, the more play you have and it won't show anything. So yes, produces a longer scale going from 60 to 80. Yeah, you get more grays, right? The higher the KVP, the more, the more scatter produced and the more grays you're gonna have. So you, it makes a longer scale of contrast. Number three, it produces more scatter. Yes, high KVP produces more scatter than low. So the answer is D, all of those. You guys, remember a longer scale of contrast means low contrast, many shades of gray, long scale. Short scale is the opposite. 19, which of the following have effect on spatial resolution? The focal spot size? Yeah, use a small focal spot, you get better spatial resolution. Type of rectification has nothing to do with um, resolution. SID. Yeah, it does affect it. Because remember, the shorter the... Res or type of rectification doesn't have anything to do with it. The, sh the shorter the SID, what do you get? What do you get when you come in? No, this is talking about scattered magnification. Good, magnification. So anytime you have magnification, you lose resolution, okay? Because it looks blurry, right? So the answer is B, one and three. You said 18. Oh, okay. 18, misalignment of a two-part IR relationship results in A, shape distortion. Okay, 20, which of the following can impact the visibility of the anode hue effect? The SID, yes. The IR size, yes, we just talked about it. Focal spot size, no, it doesn't have anything to do with the anode hue effect. Answer is B. 21, which of the following groups of technical factors will produce the greatest receptor exposure? Mm -hmm. The answer is C. Do you guys know how to do these? Yeah. You, you, you assign a number to them? <clears throat> Everybody know how to do these? Let's do this. Yeah. You might have something like this on your registry. Mm -hmm. I just multiplied the the MA times the time to get the mass. So the first one, A is four mass and ninety four is four mass. So it's asking which one would produce the greatest receptor exposure. So out of all these, which one would, the mass, which one would give you the greatest receptor exposure? C. C, the highest, highest number. So I assign it a one. Which one would give the max? So we assign it a number two. And this one, we assign it a number three. Okay, over here, KDPs. Which one give the the um, greatest receptor exposure? One, minus KDP, and two. Then just add the numbers across. So this one is five. This is two. This is three. And this is three. This one, C, is the greatest receptor exposure. Okay? All right. I think there's another one coming up that you just assign numbers to. Okay. 
22, how is SID related to exposure rate and receptor exposure? D, as SID increases, exposure rate decreases and receptor exposure decreases as well. 23, SID affects spatial resolution in which of the following ways? A, spatial resolution is directly related to SID. So the larger the SID, the more the spatial resolution. Okay, 24, types of moving grids include which of the following? B, one and two, oscillating and reciprocating. 25, all of the following are related to spatial resolution except for what? A, the MA. 26, which of the following factors influences the production of scatter radiation? All of those, D. Okay, 27. Remember, scatter doesn't happen until it hits something. All right, so don't let them try and fool you that it's anything that's occurring in the tube. There's no scatter in the tube or coming out of the tube. It doesn't happen until it hits something. 27, a 15% increase in KDP accompanied by a 50% decrease in mass will result in, this one's really tricky. The answer is B. You, there's more play without it showing. So it's telling you increasing KDP basically, you don't get a shorter scale of contrast, you get a longer scale, right? So that's wrong. In, anytime you increase KDP, you have an uh, increase in exposure latitude. Okay, C, increase in ex receptor exposure? No, it stays the same because we have the mass. Decrease in spatial resolution? Uh, mass and KDP has nothing to do with spatial resolution. Okay, so the answer is B. Okay, 28. Which of the following are causes of grid cutoff when using a reciprocating grid? So inadequate, S this one's kind of tricky. Inadequate SID. Yes, you have to use the SID that's required. X-ray tube off center with the long axis of the lead strips. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't do anything. So here's the grid. And you center here instead of being in the middle. It doesn't do anything. And what's the last one? Angling the beam in the direction of the lead lines. That's fine. Remember, you can angle the beam cephalic and caudal. You're not going to get grid cut off. So it doesn't matter angling with the direction of the line. It does matter if you angle against, doesn't it? When you angle against the direction of the, red, the lead lines, what are you going to get? Where? Here. Where? Here. Right on the side. Nope. Here. No. Nope. Here. Everywhere. Here. When you angle against the direction of the lead lines, you get grid cut off across the whole thing. If you use the improper SID, you get grid cut off at the lateral edges. The answer was A. 29, foreshortening of an anatomic structure means that A. A, it's projected on the IR smaller than its actual size. 30, focal spot blur is greatest at which end, cathode or anode? B, at the cathode end, good. 31, the continued emission of light by a phosphor after its activating source has ceased is termed B, fluorescence, also known as lag. 32, materials that emit light when stimulated by X-ray photons are called C, phosphors. 31 was B, phosphorescence. Okay, they, those two might not be on your registry. 33, in which of the following examinations should 70 kbp not be exceeded? C, IBP or IBU. 34, a compensating filter is used to do what? B, it evens out the densities. Okay. 35, which of the following pathologic conditions will probably require a decrease in exposure factors? B, osteoporosis. 
36, that the lateral projection of the chest is being performed on an asthenic patient and all the, and sorry, and the outer photocells are selected, what's likely to be the outcome? So you have the three, you have the three photocells. And you selected all three, but you have a little skinny person. What's gonna happen? Hmm? It's gonna be underexposed because that those x-ray photons are gonna hit these two outer ones. It's gonna cut the, the exposure off too fast. Okay. So that should be it would be underexposed. So it's the letter A, a decrease in receptor exposure. What if you what if you were doing a knee? and you, you accidentally hit an outer chamber. Be it would be underexposed as well. What if you were doing a PA chest and you selected the middle chamber? It would be, it would be overexposed. <laughs> 36, if a lateral projection of the chest is being performed on an asthenic patient and the out, oh, I kind of went over that, but. If the lateral projection is being performed on an asthenic patient, did I already do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 37, if 300 MA has been selected for a particular exposure, what exposure time would be required to produce 60 mass? Mm -hmm. Good, D, just plug in the numbers. MA times time equals mass. 38, although the stated or um, this, although the stated, the stated focal spot is considered the effective. Okay. Is measured directly under the actual focal spot. What focal spot is actually, uh, focal, focal spot varies along the length of the, of the beam. At which, which portion of the x-ray beam is the effective uh, spot the largest? Um, at the cathode, it's just talking about heel effect. Oh. Okay. What's the actual focal spot? The target. Good. Those are that's where the electrons hit the target material. What's the effective focal spot? Goes down the one that goes down and hits the patient. All right. Good. Thirty-nine. When using a fixed mass and variable KVP technical factors for each centimeter increase in patient thickness, how do you adjust your KVP? Good. Increase KVP by two. I think we did that at summer science comp. Number 40, factors that can, can regulate receptive exposure are milliamperage, yeah. yeah. Exposure time, mm -hmm. yeah. Kilovoltage, yeah. yeah, all of those. 41 is kind of hard to see in it, uh, anyway. Which of the following errors is illustrated in the figure below? Mm -hmm. To me, the patient doesn't look centered either. But anyway, the, the answer is B, the x-ray tube's not centered to the grid. Okay, 42, acceptable methods of minimizing motion of sh on sharpness are all of those. Hold your breath, short exposure time, and instruct the patient, D. 43, the exposure factors of 300 MA, 0 0.017 second, and 72 KVP produce a mass value. So they're just asking for mass. They just threw in the KVP. So multiply 300 times 0 0.017 and you get A, five mass. 44, which of the following pathologic conditions would require, require an increase in exposure factors? Mm -hmm. D, ascites, which is fluid. 45. A radiograph made with a focus grid demonstrated decreased receptor exposure on its lateral edges. This is most likely due to what? D, the SID. Okay, 46. Power mass and receptor exposure related in the process of image formation. B, mass and receptor exposure are di directly proportional. 47, OID is related to spatial resolution in which of the following ways? Mm -hmm. B, spatial resolution is inversely related to OID. Because remember what happens when you increase the OID. What do you get? Decreased, uh, decreased um, spatial resolution because of what? <coughs> Good, because of the magnification you're gonna get. Okay, 48, an increase in K KV will result in what? 
Mm -hmm. A, it produces a longer scale of contrast. 49, in digital imaging, as the size of the image matrix increases, mm -hmm. answer is C, two and three. Field of view, the matrix and field of view are independent of each other. You can do one without affecting the other. Okay, 50, spatial resolution is directly related to, meaning if one goes up, the other one does too. The answer is A, SID. KBP has nothing to do with spatial resolution. That little chart that you guys got that has the different things in it, make sure you look that over. I think I gave it to you with this test. You know, that, the dreaded chart that everybody hates? Mm -hmm. That one. Make sure you look that chart over. Okay. All right, so. 51, which of the following factors contributes to the efficiency of performance of the grid? The grid ratio? Yeah. yeah. Number of lead strips per inch? Yeah. yeah. Amount of scatter transmitted through the grid? Yeah. So all of those affect it. D. 52, focusing distance is associated with which of the, the it's also called focal range, is associated with which of the following? D, the grid. Okay, 53, characteristics of a low ratio focus grid include they have a greater focal range. Yeah, you have more SID to work with. They are less efficient than the high grid ratio, yes. They can be used inverted. No, you can never invert them. Answer is B, one and two. 54, which of the following will contribute to the production of a longer scale of contrast? Increasing KB? Yes. Yes. Increasing in grid ratio? No, you have a shorter scale because it absorbs scatter. Increase in photon energy? Yeah, it's like increasing your KB. So the answer is C, one and three. 55, a satisfactory radiograph of the ab abdomen was made at 42 inches SID using 300 MA, 0 0.06 seconds and 80 KBP. If the distance is changed to 38 inches, what will the new exposure time be? So this is that mass distance formula. Okay, it's directly related. So old mass over new mass equals old distance squared over new distance squared. So they're directly related. So if you plug in the numbers, you get 14.7 mass. So we found the mass, but it's giving us the, it wants to know what time. So 14.7 divided by 300 is 0 0.05 seconds. Okay, because it gave us the MA, but it's looking for a different, a new time. Do you all get it? Okay, plug in the numbers on the formula first, and it comes to 14.7 mass. Okay, but it wants to know what exposure time, so we're looking for exposure time, so 14.7 divided by 300, because that's the MA we want, gives us 0.05 seconds. of the following uh, groups of technical factors which will produce the greatest receptor exposure. Mm -hmm. We've 
assign numbers to this again, okay? So looking down at the mass, so the two with the highest, A and B, assign the mass a number of one for each of those, and the five mass assign it the number two, okay? 70 or kbps, you're gonna assign the 85 kbps the number one, because they're the highest. 74 kbps are the number two. Okay, so looking at the SIDs, which one gives the most receptor exposure? B, because it's 36 inches. Assign it a number one, which one gives the next? B, assign that one a number two. What's next? A, assign it a number three, and C is a number four. Add the numbers across. What's the lowest number? Mm -hmm. B, so the answer is B. That would be the greatest receptor exposure. Okay, 57. Why is a very short exposure time essential in chest radiography? C, to minimize involuntary motion. 58, here's the picture. The interaction between X-ray photons and matter in the figure below describes, so what is it describing? First of all, if you look at it, which, which photon interaction? Hmm? Good, that's Compton. So you see an X-ray photon coming in, it's got a little arrow, it hits that outer shell electron, it ejects it, and then the photon goes off in another direction, it's deviated. Okay, so that, that is Compton that it's showing you. So does Compton usually occur in high atomic numbers? No, what does? Photoelectric does. Does it occur during examination of the abdomen? Yes, get a lot of scatter. Does it uh, occur using high KBP and low mass exposures? Yes, so the answer is C, clearly. 59, which of the following may be used to reduce the effect of scattered radiation on finished images? All of those would reduce scattered radiation on the finished image. Okay, 60, to produce just a perceptible increase or just to be able to see a little increase in receptor exposure, the radio radiographer should do what? A, mass by 30%. 61, all of the following affect exposure rate and primary, exposure rate of the primary beam except for which one? D, the field size doesn't affect exposure rate. 62, which of the following group of exposure factors would be uh, most effective in eliminating prominent vascular markings in the REO position of the sternum. So what, are, what is it asking you? Sometimes we do REOs doing what? Kind of like um, maybe a lateral T-spine? Do you do it? Okay, so it's asking you about a breathing technique. So how do you do breathing techniques? What kind of MA? Low MA, long exposure time. So look at your list. Which is the lowest MA? D, and it has the longest exposure time. So the answer is D. Sixty-three. The modeled appearance, you can't see it, but so that modeled appearance is all the way outside of the skull. It's not just within the skull, it's outside of the skull. So what could that be? D, pillow artifacts. 64, as the grid ratio is increased, what happens to your scale of contrast when you increase your grid ratio? It gets shorter, good. So the answer is B, the scale of contrast becomes shorter. 65, if a particular grid has lead strips of 0.4 millimeter thick and 4.0 millimeter high and 2.5 millimeter apart, what's the grid ratio? The answer is D. Remember, grid ratio is the height of the lead strips divided by the distance between them. You get a grid ratio by dividing the height of the lead strips by the distance between them. 
So 4.0 divided by 0.25, you get 16. It's all, they're all set to one. So this is a 16 to one grid. What's grid frequency? That's grid ratio. What's grid frequency? Good. Grid frequency is the number of lead lines per unit. In usually CMs. All right. So they just threw in that uh, um, what they just throw in. They just threw in the thickness there. You don't need that thickness. Okay. All right, 66. If a radiograph exposed using a 12 to 1 grid exhibits loss of uh, receptor exposure at the lateral edges, it's probably because. A, the SID. So remember, lateral edges is something wrong with the SID. 67, high KB exposure factors are usually required for which of the following exams? Water soluble iodinated? No, they say, say try and keep it under 70, 75. A negative contrast agent like air? No, they, keep, they say to keep it low. Barium sulfate? Yes, answer is C, three. 68, which of the following focal spot sizes should be employed for magnification? So what do you get with magnification? Decrease resolution. Okay, decrease resolution. So, good, the smaller the focal spot, the more you, resolution you get. So just look for the smallest focal spot which is A, 0.2. 69, for which of the following exams uh, would a grid not be necessary in the adult? B, a knee. 70, which of the following affects both the quantity and quality of the beam? I think this is a repeat. The answer is C, only one and two. 71, a quality assurance program served to all of those. The answer is D. 72, spatial resolution can be improved by decreasing SID? No, that, that increases spatial res, or, um, yeah, the answer is C, two and three. So if you decrease SID, you increase or decrease spatial resolution. 73, distortion can be caused by tube angle, yeah. The position of the organ or structure within the body? Yes. The positioning of the part? Yes. So all three of those, D. 74 methods that reduce the production of scatter radiation include? Production, that's the key word. Compression reduces the, good, the answer is A. A grid doesn't affect production, it just removes it. 75, a grid is usually employed with a large body part? Yes. Using high DVP? Yes. When less patient dose is required? No, because you have to add mass. So the answer is C, one and two. 76, the image I've seen below, it's hard to see, but there's it's an adhesive tape going across the head. A, you can kind of see it. 77, how would the introduction of a six inch OID affect image contrast? A, contrast is increased because we're doing an air gap technique. 78, an exposure was made 600 MA um, at 0 0.04 seconds, which comes to 24 mass, if you multiply it out, and 85 KDP. Each of the following changes will serve to decrease receptor exposure by half, except for Good, C, 18 mass. All the other ones will decrease it by half. 79, if 92 KB and 12 mass were used for a particular abdominal exposure, um, I don't know if this is gonna be on your registry. Let's do it anyway. With single phase equipment, what mass is required to produce a similar radiograph with three phase six poles? The answer is C. You guys have the numbers? 
some more? Okay. Eighty. Which of the following pathologic conditions requires a decrease in exposure factors? All of those do. All of them have to do with destruction process. 81. Geometric unsharpness is influenced by? All of those. D. 82. Which of the following adult uh, examinations require the use of a grid? All of those do. D. 83. Combinations of milliampers and exposure time that produce a particular mass will produce identical receptor exposure. You guys, I think you just did this in Terry's lab. Those of you that were in there. C. Reciprocity. A. 84. Which of the following conditions will require an increase in x-ray photon energy? D. Ascites, because it's you have to increase your KVP. 85, if 300 MA was selected for a particular exposure, what exposure time should be selected to produce 18 mass? Mm -hmm. B, 0.06, 300, 300 times X equals 18. I'm sorry, what was it down before 82? 82, the answer was D. Okay, 85, we're on it, the answer is B. 86, grid interspace materials can be made of plastic, yes, lead, no, <laughs> aluminum, yes, the answer is C. 87, which of the following will have a, an effect on image contrast? B, less scatter with beam restriction, less scatter using grids, focal spot does, size doesn't have anything to do with contrast. 88, an increase in exposure factors is usually required by which of the following circumstances? Mm -hmm. All of those. Edema is fluid, ascites is fluid, acromegaly, that's a big, big, huge person. All, all three. 89, which of the collimated field, when the collimated field must extend past the edge of the body, allowing primary radiation to strike the tabletop, like in a lateral L-spine, what may be done to prevent excessive radiographic density